build up to something today what the Lord has put on my heart and um, because I don't want to live in a lie I don't want to live in deception and it's what today is about it's about um, the the lie that um, the enemy has us in um, the only truth there is is Jesus Christ Amen. I mean, He is the final authority. His Word is the final authority. Amen. If I ever, if I ever, and I just want to talk to you guys today. That's why I'm sitting down. Um, and we're going to get into some stuff. Um, we're going to get into some, we're going to get into some stuff today. Um, I, you're going to be challenged today. I guarantee it. And some of you might not come back. Uh -oh. <laughs> but if I can't, if I can't um, share with you, you know that that last song that that uh, was sang was "Where You Go, I'll Go," and what you say, I'll say. Right. So I want to talk to you about. Because of the times and the seasons that we're living in today, um, you know, it's uh, one of the good things is that the Bible says that we'll know, you know, the times and the seasons because in the last days knowledge would be increased. Amen. We have been hidden in deception for so long, you know, with things that it's come to. It's like now within myself, you know, I'm learning that, you know, what is truth? What is really the truth? And what is, you know, the lie? Because most everybody in here would say that, you know, we believe that we walk in the truth. And that truth we do is Jesus Christ. He is God in the flesh. He came down here. He died for our sins. He was the Passover lamb. There's no way to the Father except through the Son. Um, he's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Um, he's the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. There is no other. Um, if any other gospel is preached, Paul says, let, let that man be accursed. And, and Father, if I preach any other gospel, let me be accursed. And I can say that with boldness because I know who I serve. I serve Jesus Christ, Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach. I teach the full word, the full gospel. And there are some things in there that is going to challenge your beliefs. You're going to find out today. Because I'm going to take you to a place today that um, I'm going to challenge you in a big way. And I need you to go search these things out for yourself because the closer we get to the end the more truth is going to be revealed and um, I want to tell you what I believe first there are some things that are that are happening right now um, in the world it's kind of crazy before I get into that is that you know last week I taught I told you guys that the Lord I feel like we're heading into a time where the true Christians are going to be persecuted and we need to be prepared for what's coming but there's another gospel that's preached out of, out there that says that we're going to be taken away and we don't have we don't have to worry about those things um, so Whatever, whatever it is, wherever you find yourself, you need to trust in God, okay? So, um, I don't think it was by any coincidence that when I went on vacation, I wound up reading two of Corey Ten Boone's books. And the first one was, you know, um, 
with her being in a death camp, you know, place. the hiding place. And the other one was Tramp for the Lord, where she ministered for like 33 years. And she gave her testimony of how and what God had done, you know, uh, during that time and, and in her ministry afterwards. And she died in the 80s. I think 1983 is when she died, 83, 84. Um, so anyway, she lived to be a ripe old age of almost 90. She was way up there. Mighty, mighty woman of God. Um, she uh, gives a lot of her, uh, of her ability to be who she was, not only through Jesus Christ, he's the first, but Betsy, her sister, helped her. He taught her about love, like exactly what John had said. You know, uh, the Bible says that... Um, um, that um, in Philippians that um, uh, for this is the will of God you know wherever you find yourself for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concern you okay. so um, not that we give glory that someone is bound up or whatever it is but these trials and these testings is what's helping us become who we are um, and then when I get home I get a phone call that the Fox Book of Martyrs is going to be at the stadium right here. So do you think this is by coincidence? No. No. If you, you know, it was really good too. They had about probably 15 pastors. They had a good little show up crowd that was there. And it was really about being able to support and pray for our brothers and sisters that are in Jesus Christ that are being persecuted, Amen. you know, uh, on the other side of the world. And they inside of this book, which we're going to pray for today before we leave, Mom, uh, we're going to have communion today. Um, there is a uh, there's a map in here. And on this map, if you open it up, it tells you what they would like. There's 10 things that you can pray for the persecuted church in here. So as you're on your way out the door, if you don't have one, we have them outside right by the door. You know, before you walk out there on the right-hand side, I encourage you to get it and look at it and keep our uh, brothers and sisters in prayer because um, it's not going to be long, I believe, that we're going to be in the same place. And I'm going to show you why. Um, so I think this right here, what God was leading me to, was a preparation to prepare the church. That's my job. Um, my job is not, you know, to lie to you. My job is not to get anything from you because I don't want anything that you have. I just want you to see Jesus. Um, I've never asked anybody in here to borrow any money, not one time ever. I've always trusted the Lord. So, um, you know me, I don't preach about the tithe. I'm against it. I believe it was an old covenant deal, and I believe that we need to trust in the Lord for an offering. You know, whatever God offers, it's for here to pay the bills and, and help us a little bit. Um, we struggle on the income that we receive. We receive $1,200 a month, $800 from another church, and $400 from this one. And... Um, but God's got a plan. And, you know, I left the job making about $120,000 a year to become a pastor. So, obviously, I'm not in it for the money. Um, so, you know, and I count it joy when people talk about, you know, uh, that I'm preaching a false message. And the thing is, we need to pray for those because they, they don't see, you know, they're, they're not seeing the truth and what's clear through his word. And I don't dislike them. I absolutely love them. In fact, it's like, it kind of like, Lord, open their eyes, you know, because uh, I've been serving the Lord a long time now. And I've devoured this Bible and, um, and I've come across things and spoke about things that contradict probably 95% of the pastors that are out there today. As far as, not on the basic gospel of Jesus Christ, but if you've been with me any, for any amount of time, you know that I believe in, you know, that the sons of God came down and took the daughters of men and bore giants. It's evident. It's obvious. There's many pastors and preachers that preach these things. The Bible says, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. You guys know that. I really get into the deep revelation of the Word. 
and reveal the hidden things? Because the Bible says it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. And I want to tell you something. It's the glory of Satan to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. Because he does exactly what God the Father does. So he has a hidden agenda, you know, just like God the Father had a hidden agenda that he had hidden through time until that time was complete for that to be manifested. And we found out that Jesus Christ says that I am the hidden agenda. I am the lamb. I am the Passover lamb. Everything that you've been reading and studying, it's about me. Well, guess what? They called him a false prophet. They called him everything they possibly could. They couldn't handle him. Because, you know, why do you want to stone me and kill me? Because, you know, because the words I speak, are they not truth? For what, uh, for what uh, thing that I've said that you want to kill me? You know, well, who said we want to kill you? Well, you know, and right after that, they want to throw him off a mountain. I think that's wanting to kill him. So, but the biggest thing is, even like Paul, Paul persecuted the church. Paul had persecuted the church because he hadn't seen Jesus. His eyes wasn't opened up to the truth. And then... When Paul's eyes were opened up to the truth, it says in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians that in chapter 12 that he was taken up and he saw things that's unspeakable, that he can't even speak about. Okay. And because of the revelation and the understanding of the word that he had, God placed a thorn in his flesh, a messenger from Satan, to buffet him to keep him humble. And he was a frail man. He wasn't big, probably five foot six or so, very skinny. Um, wasn't much to look at. And uh, they believe he had an eye. He couldn't see perfectly well. And because of the infirmity the, that was in his side, they believe uh, he told the Galatian church that if it were possible, you've go, gouged out your own eyes and given them to me. The reason he said it to the Galatian church was because they were the makers of eye balm, eye salve, and Paul had, you know, Paul couldn't go by himself. That's why Luke was with him. Luke was a physician. Luke had to take care of him. And that's why Luke done most of his writings because Paul was unable to write because of, not unable, but it was very hard for him to write. And if you know Paul, we, he, he, it's, he, we have about 14 of his letters. We believe Hebrews was one, but we have 13 epistles. Paul was, you know, a Pharisee of Pharisees. He could quote the Torah verbatimly. By the time he was actually 19, some say 13, but actually by the time he's 19, it was around between the ages of 7 and 19 that he was taken under the feet of Gamaliel. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel, the rabbi. Just like us, we come to the feet of Jesus and that he is our master. He is our rabbi. He is the one that teaches you and me. When you hear the truth, truth is hard. And I'm telling you all of these things because there's something I want to share with you and which... Uh, is really would really bust some things wide open, um, and it's uh, it, it spun me for a loop. It really did. But then I had to consider it, and uh, so let me just kind of walk you guys into uh, kind of where the Lord had had me, and um, let me just tell you right now what the world's saying, um, and. And then I'm going to kind of uh, talk to you about some things. Let me, let me just read this to you. Um, September of this year, September 23rd, is like a major deal this year they're talking about, okay? There is movies that goes all the way back to the 1980s that depicted in movies that September 23rd of 2015 was going to be uh, a time that's going to bring in a, a cataclysmic change, okay? Even right now we have uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Kahn talking about the end of the Shemitah year in September. But let me just read some things of what's actually being said about this year. First, I want to tell you that September 15th of this year coming, 2015, is Rosh Hashanah. Rosh means chief or the head of the new year. So there's a new year that's coming to us right now. All right? And then uh, September 23rd is Yom Kippur. That's the Day of Atonement. So September 23rd is a key date of what's being displayed out there in a huge way right now. Because on the Day of Atonement, 
Yom Kippur, they're saying these things is, uh, this, this is what they're saying about these times. Uh, September, they say, is the Shemitah year. The Shemitah is the year of release. Okay? It's when uh, it's uh, a new beginning, a new cycle. It begins the Jubilee year. That's what they're saying about this year. Um, and it begins, you know, uh, on the 15th, but the 23rd is Yom Kippur, and that's when everything takes place. Also, we're finding out that uh, in September, they're saying that we're going to have a global reset in the financial economy. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. They just had a big meeting over it in London, a, se a secret meeting and all of this. So I'm just going to say they supposedly supposed to have a global reset in finances September of this year. Okay? Where your money is going to be devalued to hardly nothing. Okay? Now I'm just telling you the reports that's out there. This is actually even being said by Jonathan Kahn and other major prophets. The other thing that's being said for September is that we supposed to have September 23rd, we supposed to have a meteor strike the Atlantic and cause uh, millions of people to die. It's going to, uh, and then they also have prophets prophesying right now. Uh, there's one especially out of uh, Mexico that prophesied this a year ago that uh, a media was going to strike and destroy all of New York, uh, the East Coast, um, and send tsunami waves all the way across the world to the other side. So this September, I mean, they're bombarding this thing in a huge way, okay? Um, also in September, it's, uh, we have the Pope coming um, to address the nation. September 23rd, he's coming, um, and he's going to address Congress September 24th, and what he's going to address Congress on September 24th is sustainable life. Okay? A lot of big things happening. So here, the Pope, for the first time, is going to come to the United States to address our Congress about sustainable life. Um, also, they say in that September um, begins the Jubilee year. September 23rd, actually 28th, right up in September right there. Because, And also I wanted to tell you, September 28th is the, the lunar eclipse. It's the closest the moon's going to be to the Earth in 5,000 years. It's going to be the biggest blood moon that any of us have ever seen, anybody living on the Earth today in our past history. It's called, uh, you know, um, a super moon. It's going to be totally blood, and totally red, and it's going to be shown over, um, you know, Israel. That's where they're going to see it. So we have that happening as well. Um, the other thing we have happening in September, on September 23rd, is the hydrogen collider. They're going to crank the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen collider up to like 13 uh, tetrons or kilotrons or whatever it is, which they've already reached, reached it, and they're going to smash these particles into one another to look for the God particle, which is dark matter. And basically, but what the hydrogen collider is, is actually it's to open up a portal. It's a, it's a key that opens the door. How do we know that? Well, you can just go to that website and look. The front page, you know, besides it having three sixes on it, they got three sixes on it, um, there is some people that are standing there, one woman and two men, and they're holding a key. A key is what opens a door, the door to a portal, which is supposedly, it's three miles underground, it's, they're going to open the abyss, is what they're going to do, okay, this year. Um, the other thing that is coming in September is what is called Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland, anybody ever heard of Tomorrowland? Okay, you saw that. Uh, that is, Tomorrowland is going to be... Um, uh, where it's the, they got a big woman's face, um, they all are wearing bla bracelets, and um, it's to usher in the new world. And uh, 
you got to look at this thing. It is absolutely freaky what they're going to be doing on uh, in September for Tomorrowland. Where's this open? Um, I think it's in New York. Is it? No, it's Georgia. Georgia. Somewhere outside of. Um, y- yeah. Uh, yeah, they're expecting millions of people to be there. Millions. Is that like an amusement park or something? It is. It's kind of. It's kind of like that, but it's a gathering with a big festival, music, big thing with this. It's. It's. You got to look at it. Look at Tomorrowland. Yeah. It. It's. Well, you can go on you can go on YouTube and you can look at these things uh, in Tomorrowland. You can go check it out. The movie just opened up Tomorrowland. I went and saw it. Let me tell you something. If you sat down next to me and I uh, revealed the movie to you, it would absolutely blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. I sat there, me and my wife, and I was just pointing out things of. Um, Long story short, I'll get into that later. Um, so, and I think I missed something. There is something else that's happening uh, in September. And I think there are two things that I know. One thing to this, uh, this thing about that five months they have to be there. Oh, that's it. That was it. Yeah. The, the, yeah, in the France, the president of France, along with John Kerry and our president, Barack Obama, uh, uh, said on May 13th and 14th, this was televised on regular news, that we have 500 days to avoid weather, uh, to, uh, avoid weather chaos. Well, the, the, it was actually until weather chaos. We have 500 days until weather chaos. So, which is September 23rd. That's right. They're being bombarded right now. Um, But what I want to do is, first thing I want to do with you guys is uh, I want you to, uh, there are a lot of things that are happening right now. There are a lot of things that are coming. And I believe, um, in fact, besides all of that, Um, Zenith 2016, Thomas Horn, um, I I regard very highly, very highly. Uh, Him and Chris Putnam, they wrote quite a few books. But in the majority of the churches right now today, they're teaching um, that uh, this September, um, a lot of them are believing that it's the rapture of the church. Okay? So that's another thing I forgot to list. You can write that down on your list that you believe that um, when the media comes down, we go up. If that happens, thank you, Jesus, because I am ready. You hear me? Because I'm on board for to go. All right? I'm ready. Right now, I'm ready. Tomorrow, I was ready years ago. You know, I have something that, but I don't believe. I don't believe. And I'm going to show you why I don't believe. I'm not sure, though, but I don't believe it is. Okay? I don't have all the answers. I'm just going to tell you and share with you what God has put in my heart. I am going to rock your boat today. If I haven't rocked it yet. That that wasn't part of the rocking. Okay? It has nothing to do with the rocking of the boat. So they can call me what they want. They can call me a false teacher. But I love Jesus Christ with everything in me. And last night in my bed, I was asking Jesus, I want to just draw closer to you. I want, I want more of you. I don't have enough. I just, you know. Um, what's on the other side is so amazing. You know, and... Uh, but let me read something to you. Because I'm going to get you kind of excited a little bit. And uh, this is pretty amazing. So... Bob, if you want to know something, the whole world say in September Jesus is coming. That sounds right. That sounds good, huh? I know. Besides they're having wars all over the place, besides oh, oh, the other thing I missed, I didn't say, is Operation Jade Helm. Oh, yeah. Jade Helm goes to September. That's the other thing. <laughs> July, though, right? it, they said July 15th to September 15th, but they found out they're starting June 15th now. 
Yes, June 15th. And this was from a government document, Jade, Operation Jade Helm. Um, it's our military, it's the bi biggest military movement we've had. Uh, since World War II that's in actually, they said seven states but are nine, and now they're finding they're actually in more. Yes? And, and what they were trying to work with the city council. Right. And what they were talking about, they were actually saying, working with the citizens in Florida. And then uh, the other thing about Texas, Texas is a lone state. They, uh, they optioned whether they could be part of the union or not in their clause. So they optioned out now. So, yes. So now they stand alone, the lone star, the lone state. And now when they just, you know, uh, told Obama and with their deal and all they're doing, they're not going to have any part of it, well, then all of a sudden they get all of this crazy weather, which they believe it's the harp system. Um, they're showing you the footage of actually the harp working and causing what's going on over there. So maybe you might want to call me crazy with that too. I believe, you know, Amen. they manipulate the weather. The Bible says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. That means he controls the atmosphere. He can control it. The Bible says in the end that he call, causes fire to come down from heaven. He shows great signs and wonders that if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived in those days. So I want to read to you something by Thomas Horn. Um, it says, uh, and, and I got his book. It's really, uh, I'm glad Brother Perry brought it. I was actually looking for the book of Enoch, but um, um, I want to read something to you guys. Um, Zena 2016 by Thomas Horn, page 244 and 46. It says that. Um, um, oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that they're saying that September 23rd is the 70th uh, generation from the flood of Noah. They're saying that it's the 70th generation from the flood from Noah. Okay, and why is that important? Well, let's have a look at it. Um, Let's check it out and see what it says. Enoch's 70 generations. Enoch was the son of Jared, father of Methuselah, and great-grandfather of Noah, whose writings provide the most detailed account of the fall of the watchers, the angels who um, fathered the infamous Nephilim. While the book of Enoch is no longer included in most versions of the Bible, Enoch's writings are quoted in the New Testament in at least two places, and he is mentioned by name in both the Old and New Testaments, including Jude 14 uh, and 15, verses 14 and 15. Um, where one of his prophecies is cited. During the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, pre-Maccabean fragments of the Book of Enoch were found, um, helping scholars verify the book's antiquity um, while also illustrating that the ancients held these texts to be inspired. Many early fathers, likewise, considered the Book of Enoch to be sacred, including um, Tertullian, Justin Martyr, um, and a whole bunch of Clement of Alexander. This is an important in fact, because if, if Enoch was truly a prophet, then the world may be in for an unfathomable surprise concerning the return of the Nephilim and soon. The 10th chapter, now I want to tell you something about this 10. When I was reading the book, um, and my wife will verify this, and I said it the week, last week while I was here, I kept seeing that number 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So I circled it all the way through the book, 230 something pages. It was everywhere, and then I'm asking the Lord, what is up? What are you trying to tell me with the 10, the 10? So when I saw this, it says, uh, the 10th chapter of the book of Enoch says, the watchers who would judge 
during the flood would be bound beneath the hills of the earth for 70 generations until the day of their final judgment when they will be released from those confines and thrown into the abyss of fire to torment in the prison in which they were confined forever. But in the 15th chapter, Enoch writes about the deceased offspring of the watchers, the giants or the Nephilim as described as being released at the same time to bring slaughter and destruction upon man. The spirits of giants shall be concealed and shall not rise up against the sons of men and against the women until they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. That's what they're trying to do right now. They're opening the abyss. Okay. This particular prophecy mirrors those of Isaiah and other apocryphal works which indicate a future date in which watchers will rise for judgment while their giant offspring resurrect from beneath the hills of the earth to wreak havoc upon the earth. According to Enoch, this unparalleled event is scheduled to occur after 70 generations have passed from the time of the flood. This could be troubling. Although traditional scholarship places the time of the Great Flood between 2500 and 2300 B.C., 100 years before Christ, modern Dayton, by some researchers, have roughly estimated the flood to have actually transpired between 2900 and 2800 B.C. For instance, this is the dating given by a group of scientists from USA, Russia, Australia, France, Ireland, uh, known as the uh, Holocene Impact Working Group with hypothesis of the Great Flood resulted from a comet striking the Indian Ocean between 28 and 29. They're saying a comet's going to strike again. Okay, I don't believe it's a comet. I, I do believe we're going to have a strike though. Alright. Resulting in a mega tsunami. Because of the prophetic generation is 70 years based on Psalms 90 verse 10 the days of our years are three score and ten wow the ten again I'm like Lord Enoch 70 generations times 70 years equals 4,900 years forward from the flood. If that took place between 2800 and 2900 BC, this brings us to the return of the Nephilim to the immediate hour in which we live. In other words, if this 28 to 2900 BC dating is correct, mankind is on the threshold of the watchers being raised from the underground prisons and thrown uh, into the abyss of fire while their giant offspring return to the surface um, of earth in violent fulfillment of multiple prophecies. CERN is trying to open the abyss. Wow. We have no idea whether the modern time frame for Great Flood is reasonable. The Book of Jubilees, another apocry apocryphal text, seems to verify this frightening scenario. This is not God-inspired text, okay? I only go straight from God's Word, but in the inspired Word of God, Jude and Peter both talk about it. It's directly quoted from the Book of Enoch. And Enoch spoken of as being a seventh from Adam, and he was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says. And we learn from Enoch, whose whole book preaches that Jesus is the Messiah. I read the whole entire book and didn't find a flaw, not one, that contradicted the Word of God. Not one. So that makes me believe the authenticity of that book corresponding to the Word of God and what he said. I believe God didn't give us the book of Enoch because everything that we needed was in his Word. Right? So it's already there. Um, we have no idea whether the modern time frame for the Great Flood is reasonable. The Book of Jubilees, another apocryphal text, seems to verify the frightening scenario prophesying Nephilim on the earth in the last days. Again, the familiar word corruption turns us up in an association with these beings, insinuating an end times repeat of what the watchers did by corrupting human DNA and blending it with animals to re retrofit human bodies for Nephilim incarnation. 
This is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, that as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And when Azel and Zazel came down, they taught the humans how to manipulate the DNA chain. And that's why it says that the beasts of the earth were defiled and the human DNA chain was defiled. It's always about the blood. They want to infect the, the blood. And that's why I believe the mark of the beast is going to be the infection of your DNA, which is going to be implanted in your right hand or your forehead. It's going to be injected in you. Um, they're saying right now the retina scan with the eyes, your eyes are in your forehead. They're reading your eyes. It's through the retina of your eyes that is going to even be able to say whether you're human or not. Okay? So we're living in the times. They've built a 27-mile hydrogen, hydrogen collider three miles under the earth. They built this thing three miles under the earth. It's a 27-mile loop system in which they walk around in the inside of where they're smashing particles together, which is a door. And if you look at all your movies, you know, you'll see these, this, this figure, uh, you know, this circle, you know, that is the doorway, CERN. Um, you see the Stargate was a circle. You see the Mayan calendar, that thing, it's a circle. It's actually a portal. It's all over the Egyptian hieroglyphs everywhere, how they come through this portal. But in fact, it says even Babylon, Babel, was made in a uh, Fibonacci circle. It was a tower that made a Fibonacci circle and the technology they had back then, they was lifting 160 uh, 160,000 160 pound 160 ton rocks, granites they were lifting up and they show it to you today in places that is unimaginable. We don't have modern technology today that can lift stones that big. 160 tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds. But what they said back then, what it was that, um, that Nimrod was doing when he said, I'll exalt, like Satan said, I'll exalt my throne into heaven. Nimrod had the technology, and what he was doing, he was opening a portal. It actually operated like CERN to open a portal to heaven, from heaven to earth. That's what they're doing right now. So that this uh, dark matter, which is of the Nephilim, is going to return back to the earth. They're already manipulating the DNA and making things that is unbelievable. The Bible says that when the Lord returns, the earth is going to open up. And demon-like horsemen, like unto locusts, is going to come out, having the face of a woman, the teeth, you know, of a lion, hair like a woman, face like a man, teeth like a lion, a breastplate of iron. That's not a helicopter. These are real things that are going to come out of the bowels of the earth, sent here to torment men for five months. This is the creation of the manipulation of the DNA strand that we're about to see. It says, the malignant evil ones, spirits of the Nephilim, um, was destroyed in the flood, were bound in the place of uh, condemnation, but a tenth part of them were left that they might be subject before Satan on the earth. These are for corruption of the DNA as in the days of old and leading astray men before Satan's judgment. Finally, a prophecy in the second chapter of the book of Joel could refer to this same end times volcano of resurrected Nephilim. While some imposters say Joel was probably describing an army of locusts uh, with uh, phrases like they are great people, strong, they're like mighty men. Gibberum. It is hard to believe these were actually talking about grasshoppers that are on the ground. They are a great people and, and strong. They have not been ever like these. Neither shall they be after it, and nothing shall escape them. Their appearance, I'm quoting directly from Joel chapter 2. I'm reading chapter 2 of Joel. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and horsemen. So uh, shall they run. They shall run like mighty men. Uh, Gibor, Gibberim, that's Nephilim, giants. 
they're saying the introduction of these will be in, on September the 23rd. Yes. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter into windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For, his for he is strong to execute his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? Joel chapter 2. Uh, 2 through 11. This is in uh, Thomas Horn's book, the book uh, Zenith 2016. You get this book and read it, it'll, uh, it'll become a really eye-opener to you. September 23rd, 2015, they're saying that it's the 70th generation since Enoch. Enoch said that on the 70th generation, the abyss was going to be open. Just so happens that in, on September 23rd, they're going to try to open this portal to bring us into tomorrow land. Is that the 40th Jubilee in September? Um, let me just keep reading. <laughs> so, it's going to bring us into tomorrow land. And I went and saw the movie Tomorrow Land. It is... Yes? That, that media, is that the one they've been watching for a few years? Planet X, isn't that something? X is a 10, right? Oh, that's good. Yeah, right? I know they've been watching one. You know the other thing? Years coming this way. What's between 9 and 11? 10. Yeah. Right? Um, let me, I haven't brought you where I want to bring you yet. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> That ain't where I want to bring you. You might want to leave now. You ready? Let's go. It's also called September 20, uh, uh, 2015 is called the International Year of Light, 5776. The year of our Lord, they say Lucifer. The year of light. 5776, the year of light, opening of CERN, the revelation or the revealing of Lucifer. It says the international year of light, 2015, 5776, um, is the year of the Lord, the year of Lucifer. CERN is a magnetic inter... This is directly from CERN. Directly from CERN. CERN is a magnetic interdimensional doorway. Interdimensional doorway. That is meant to remove the door. That is meant to remove the door or the veil. That's straight from their sight. By the way, the History Channel had that on last night. About CERN. Last night. History Channel had it on last night. CERN, let me repeat it. CERN is a magnetic interdimensional doorway that is meant to remove the veil directly from CERN. That's why they're depicted holding the key. What's that? Go to CERN. Yeah, go to CERN site. Straight to CERN. I'm not going to anybody else. Straight to CERN. That's why the, the sign of CERN is 6... Six, six, the number of the beast, the number of a man, and they have the round circle with the, what is it, the Kabbalah, what's that woman, the, the Sheba, that's, that's right, Sheba's face is on Tomorrowland, Sheba is actually standing in the CERN, which is called the Destroyer. The destroyer. These are facts. Straight from CERN. 
pull it up, you'll see Sheba. You'll see the CERN. She's in the gate. She's meant to open the gate to bring in the destroyer. I haven't told you what I want to tell you yet. <laughs> Now, I want to, I want to throw something at you. And I asked um, Rita to bring me a paper on the calculation, uh, the numbers. It tells you, you know, how long it's been since Christ's death to where we're at right now. And it's got a uh, um, seven uh, seven hundred and twenty-three thousand nine hundred and sixty-eight days. If you divide three hundred and sixty into that, you come out with um, it's already been over two thousand years. It's been two thousand eleven years. And one thing I told you guys is I believe after two days or two thousand years, the Lord was going to return. And I said that I don't believe that. Um, we haven't hit the 2,000 year mark because I believe personally between the years 2032 and 30, between the years 2030 and 33, or 2032 and 33, is actually the 2,000 year mark. And that's very important because the Lord said that he would return after two days or 2,000 years. So from Adam to Noah was 2,000 years. From Noah to Jesus was 2,000. From Jesus to now, 2,000, which is six days or 6,000 years. And then the Lord is going to return. Um, and when Rita had showed me this a while back, um, I kept it in my mind because I, I couldn't quite, you know, you know, what she was showing me here had me jarred in a, in, a, in a way. Because I know point blank what God showed me. I know what he showed me. And, um, and I'm not saying I'm right, but according to this, it's saying we've already had 2,011 years. I want to tell you something. Um, I want to throw something at you. And the Bible says in Isaiah, and if you know anything about uh, art, um, definitely my good friend here could help me out with this. The scripture in Isaiah 40, 22, you can write that scripture down. Here comes, here comes what I'm going to throw at you. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22. There are some things the Bible says that, the Bible says that when a Lord returns, let me tell you this first. I believe September 23rd of this year, something is going to happen. Some big things I believe. It's a good possibility the world's fixing to change. Okay? But I believe it's, it's false. It's going to be a false, pre-manufactured coming. Okay? Do I believe that something is going to strike the Atlantic? It's a very good possibility. But I think it's going to be a nuke. Yeah. They're going to cause this to bring, into the, bring in a new world order. All right? uh, and I'll get into that with you later. First, I need to th throw something at you that's going to shake your foundation. I guarantee it. It's going to shake you. But then I'm going to ask you, you need to go study it. Okay? Because this changes everything. Not changes nothing having to do with Jesus Christ. He's still our Savior. I mean, but if we have been taught a lie all our life, don't you want to know the truth? Don't you want to know the truth? And maybe I got some people in here that might know already. You know, might already know. I believe I know someone personally who I'm going to ask when he comes back. 27 years in the Navy, and I know if anybody, he's an ocean geographic, if anybody can answer the question that I have, it's him. I know it. But he might be sh silenced, but I'm going to try it anyway. He might have a gag order on him. And he ain't, he is, he is the bird, son. He is, he's over, he is the, over the whole ship. 
what you call like the fleet commander or however you call those guys out there, the, the, he is the man. All right? Let me throw something at you. Isaiah 40, 22 says, the earth, hold on, the Bible says that when the Lord returns, every eye will see him. Number one. The Bible says that when the Lord returns, he sends his angels in Matthew chapter 24 to gather his elect from the four winds or the four corners of the earth. Right? <coughs> Every eye will see him when he returns. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 says, The earth is a circle. Um, does that mean, if I tell you to draw me a circle, does that mean a globe? Does, does a circle and a globe are two... Two Circle is two-dimensional. A globe is three. Woo! Where you going, Pastor? Is it a possibility? Is it a possibility that everything that we've been taught about the Earth being a, a sphere is a lie? Because... The Bible says the earth is flat. The Bible says that the best way I can depict this to you is that you know the yin and the yang? You know what the yin and the yang is? It's the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon orbiting around a flat earth. Do you know that every religion in the world teaches the earth is flat? Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism. And every other religion that's out there says the world's flat. The Americans is the only one that says it's a sphere. America is the only one that says the earth is spinning at 11,000 miles an hour. Hurling through space at 92 million miles an hour into an, a galaxies of just spinning. And flying at 92 million miles an hour. Go to NASA. Go to NASA. And this globe that's tilted on its axis is spinning at 11,000 miles an hour and we're being hurled through space. But God says the earth, when it was created, it was fixed so it would not move. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 6, the earth, NASA teaches that we and all the planets revolve around the sun. Well, that's sun worship. The heliosphere. We revolve around the sun, fourth planet from the sun, and we revolve around. But the Bible teaches the earth and the moon revolve, I mean the sun and the moon revolve around the top of the earth. And it goes, just look, picture the black is dark in the, in the yin and the yang, and the other is white. It's light and darkness. And it's revolving around the top of the earth. In fact, the Bible says that when God created the earth, the word canopy, it says he created uh, the atmosphere or the firmament, which means canopy. Do you know that NASA said they can't penetrate the San Allen Belt? You know what the San Allen Belt is? The San Allen Belt's about 2,500 miles, 25, 
thousand miles or thousand miles up, and from that to around a hundred thousand miles, it's pure radiation. They can't send anything through it. It'll kill anything that goes through it. But yet, anybody have a anybody have an NIV Bible in here? Can I have it, please? <coughs> I'm going to read a scripture to you. Now, what I'm telling you, it says, uh, But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm of he that hath no strength? How hast thou concealed him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words, and whose spirit is from thee? Let me see. Let me get to... Um, it says... Um, Here it is, God describes the earth. Watch this. It says, this is Job chapter 20, 25, I mean 26, I'm sorry. And verse 7, I mean 6. It says, hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. He stretched out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. He bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. Verse 9. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth out his cloud upon it. Let me read this to see what that interpretation is. Psalms 26. I mean, I'm sorry, Job 26. We having fun yet? Have I given you something to think about? Wait, hold on. And I'm going to show you where I'm leading to. No, no, you can, well, in fact, the Bible says whatever the Lord, whatever he spoke to you in secret, shout from the rooftop. So, yeah, yeah, go search it out first for yourself, then spread it. Yes, because I'm going to tell you why in a minute. That was Job 26.9. He holdeth back the face of his throne and spreadeth his cloud upon it. And 26.9 here, it says, He covers the face of the full moon and spreadeth his clouds over it. Now hold on a second. Watch this. Let's see what NASA is saying. If this is true. It says that he holdeth back his face of his throne and King James says the face of his throne and, and the NIV says he covers the face of the full moon. The full moon? So wait, hold on a second. If that's a fact, if this is true, then you're telling me that NASA landed on the moon and conquered God's throne. I don't think so. Did you hear what I just told you? I'm reading straight from the Bible. Come on, Brad. I'm reading straight from the Bible. I don't know where God's throne is. But I know one thing. I doubt very seriously. Why is all our Apollo missions, all, you know, all of our NASA, why are they all over water? And why is when a rocket is shot up in the air, it all of a sudden turns and goes on a 70 degree angle? Why doesn't it go straight up? Well, they found out in the 1970s, 60s and 70s, that they can't even get a rocket to penetrate the Van Allen belt because it'll explode. So just as God said that we're living in the firmament, which firmament is a dome. 
and living on a flat earth where man says that we are what? <laughs> oh, there you go, shake it. Yes, come on. When a ship that has walked, they have a battleship, 15 miles. You here, you here, you go 15 miles, you go down the chain of the sea. The radius, the circumference of the earth, you can't even see the mass not at 15 miles. If you look at the horizon, li just listen. If you look at the horizon, I've done about, so far, probably 30 hours of research. Now let me tell you why I've done it. I saw Flat Earth Theory on YouTube one time. Never paid it any mind. And then I'm subscribed to Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba wrote the Archon Evasion and the Nephilim and very well-known prophecy guy in all the deal. He was challenged to prove the Earth was a sphere, was a globe going around the sun. He said, that's simple. I'll do that easy. No problem. Right now, it's probably two weeks later, he still can't prove it. The only information that we got to believe that the Earth is a sphere is from NASA. Now, if you know anything about NASA, NASA was derived from Operation Paperclip. That's right. And Operation Paperclip is when, after the 1940, the World War II, 1944 and 45, we took all of the German uh, scientists over to America because they had, you know, they had rocketry and, and all of this kind of stuff. They was way far more advanced than we were. So Operation Paperclip was actually to snatch the scientists up, bring them to the United States, and you have all the pictures with you know, our president with them, and the guy that you watched as a young boy uh, or young lady in your front room with you know, this guy who was over NASA with rockets and all this kind of stuff as a young boy was who? Van Braun. That's right. He was a German who was part of all the stuff that Hitler did. He was the head scientist, and he became where we got our NASA. Yes. Let me just tell you the theory behind everything, because it, why, where I'm going to with this is that why do we have a Gregorian calendar, a Julian calendar, a Hebraic calendar, you know, the, all of these different calendars. When the Bible clearly says that the evening and the morning was the first day and there were 24-hour cycles. Mm -hmm. Clearly. In fact, it says in, in when God had destroyed the earth with Noah, he told Noah, again, he reconfirmed the covenant that as long as, you know, it goes on, there will be evening and morning, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Why is it that we have to have 365 days in a year, and in every four years, we have to have a leap year? And who was it that told us that we was actually in the year of 5776, and that the year that we're in right now is a jubilee year, when I could prove it's wrong beyond a shadow of a doubt? This ain't a jubilee year. It's fictitious. It's made up. You know how come I know? Because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt in Luke chapter 4, chapter 4, verses 16 and on, and Isaiah chapter 61, along with Leviticus chapter 25, that when Jesus came, he said, I am the Jubilee. That's right. Jesus died on Jubilee. Jesus, between 30, his ministry, if you want to call it 27, to 33, that's seven years, however you want to call it. If he died at 30 or began his ministry at the year 27 or begin the year, you know, at 30 or however you want to call it, I don't care what you do, you go back from that time, you add 50 years to that date, you don't come to this date, Bubba. But if you had 50 years consecutively to when he was, you know, between 2030 and 2033, you come out with every 50 years is a jubilee. 
seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 360 days a year. So the calendar that we're using now and the time frame that they've given us, 360, 365 days, point something, and every fourth year we add a month, a day, is just like it says in Daniel, that the Antichrist would seek to change times and seasons so that you and I won't know when the day is. They are professing right now that the Lord is about to come back this year. And I'm saying, I don't think so. The only Lord that's coming back in the year 5776 is their Lord, Lucifer. So don't be deceived. <laughs> and the hairs on my arms are standing up. Did you see Jonathan Bardis? He had a guest talking about ISIS and what they believe. And they believe Jesus is a great prophet and that he's going to come back and have this big war in the city of Dabiq in Syria. Right. And he's going to do away with Jesus, so-called. He's going to do away with Christianity because he's really a Muslim. And I was sitting there. Did you did you see that? No, I didn't see it. it. I've heard it, though. Like, I've heard of everything you're saying. I was like, and now we want to send money to the Sunnis in Iraq and, and arms. So, that's right. So now, what we're facing is we about to see the United Nations, the elite, the New World Order, the whatever you want to call them, pull off one of the probably the biggest hoaxes and people are going to believe. Now I want to tell you something also when you do this research. I'm still in research. But everything I've researched so far tells me, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the earth is flat and that we are on a 24-hour day, seven days a week, nonstop, because that's what God the Father said. In fact, if I took it a step further, in Joshua chapter 6, it says that Joshua commanded the sun to stand still. Well... NASA says the sun doesn't move. But God says, and he said, he told the sun to stand still. And in the valley of Ekron or whatever it was, he commanded the moon to stand still. Because the Bible says that the sun and the moon orbit the top of a flat earth. Because if we look at what NASA says, when Hezekiah said it's an easy thing to cause the sundial to go forward. And if you don't know, a sundial will not work on a round earth. It'll only work on a flat earth. Especially if we're spinning at 11,000 miles an hour. So if that was the case, when the sun was commanded to stand still, then if we are revolving around the sun and the sun is not isolating it around us, remember, this earth was created for you and me. That makes us special. God prepared a place, a dome, that he put his creation in. And everything out there revolves around us. We don't revolve around it. Yes, there's a Milky Way. But we watch it from a plane. You ever look out on the water? Go look out at the water. The water is flat from one horizon to the other. It doesn't dome off. In fact, according to NASA, the sphere is 27,000 miles round. That means that every mile you go, you're going to have about a 32-inch drop. Wrong. Because from two miles away, you're looking at six foot. You mean you can't see a boat at two miles away? Right. 
But what happens is it's just like you looking at something as it gets like a car is way away. It's small. You're looking down a straight highway. You can see a car way down there. It's small, but as you get closer to it, it gets bigger. It's perception. It has nothing to do with curvature. This is serious business because this is how they hit away the time. Wow. They thought, but you know what's happening now, huh? Technology. They can't hide things anymore. What worked for them before? Now, people are like, and it doesn't take a genius to stand in Los Angeles and you're able to see 60 miles away from one city to Los Angeles at 60 miles away, see the whole entire city sitting on the water. Why is that? Where's the curvature? It should be about 10 miles down the curve. Let me take it a step further for you. Let me take it another step further for you. The UN map you see right now today is the actual map. According to God, you think about this. According to God, that's why Columbus thought that he would sail off the earth. Oh, because the earth is flat. But God made a border that holds in the seas. The center of the earth is north. There's only one pole, the North Pole. Everything opposite of it is south. Right? That's why around a flat earth there is a 200 a 200 foot wall of ice that's all the way around the entire earth. It's called Antarctica, although they show you on your map a little thing of Antarctica, but all the nations, the United Nations has made an agreement that nobody will do any work on Antarctica and it's off limits for anybody and everybody. You can't go there. In fact, let me tell you another thing. If you caught a flight from right here in the United States on the west coast and supposedly flew, flew to Japan off the west coast, well guess what? You can't catch a flight from Japan and just come right around to India right there that's right next door to it. You got to fly back from there to the United States and then from the United States, you know, from to Africa to India. You got to go that way. Why? How come the flights only go from one side to the other? And from this way to this way? How come they, you can't get a flight that goes all the way around the world? Because it's not a sphere. In fact, how come taking a satellite photograph of the water, water is always level? Is that not true? How can you take a satellite, use it to find the elevation of water here, right here, right on our Gulf Coast, and it's the same exact elevation in Africa? <laughs> I'm, hey, guess what? That preach is crazy. Put it to the test. That's what they used. That's what they used. All of the NASA bit, oh, did they make the rockets? Yeah, they made rockets, man. Why are they all named after false gods? Apollo and, and all these land and play, all of them, they're all named after false gods. It's te technology. Right? How come they're always shooting them over the water? Because you and I can't see them. Oh, you mean, oh, we got... 30,000, 30,000 floating. There is an atmosphere above here that they can put uh, uh, something in. That's true. Yeah, they, they got a place, but there's an area they can't penetrate, they can't go further into because God won't allow them. But NASA would have us to believe that through the Hubble, te Hubble, Hubble telescope, you know, we could be looking at things that's way out there, but they can never get to it. Can you imagine it says that the Earth is, is hauling through space right now at 92 million miles an hour? I mean, that sounds like the dinosaurs was, you know, was six billion years ago. That isn't what the Bible says. The Bible says that when God created the beasts of the field, they ate the green of the grass like man did. 
And when the fall of the man happened, they became carnivores. And they became wicked. Through the fall of Lucifer and the angels, they began to devour man. So they had to go in the flood. Man walked with dinosaur. That's why we got rocks over there in India right now, black stones with man riding on top of different dinosaurs. Over 500 black stones. Right. It's a lie. Do you know we're the only ones in a lie? Do you know India's not in a lie and Africa's not? Do you know Buddha's not? They're not in a lie. They know the earth is flat. Look at everything they built. Everything they got over there shows the earth is flat. In fact, the next time you see the UN flag, the UN, you'll see that the UN is, you know, it's got circles around it like this, you know, and it's got a continent here, and you'll see these two continents. That is it. That is the real flat earth. That's it. So the time. He used the prince of the power of the air to lie about the time. Because it says that's who he is. He's the prince of the power of the air. Hey, can you and I go up there and see if the earth is, uh, is round? Is a sphere? Can I go take a trip up there to see if what you're telling me is true? Or you got me looking through one of these little glasses. Do you know uh, the six astronauts, Neil Armstrong and all Buzz Aldridge and all this kind of stuff? When they ask, put your hand on a Bible and swear, that, and swear to Jesus Christ and, uh, under uh, eternal condemnation that you walked on the moon. You know what he did? He punched a man in the face. They wouldn't swear on Buzz Aldridge. Just promise on the Word of God, on, on the Word of God, that you walked on the moon. That's all I'm asking you to do. It's a lie. It's a lie. They used all of that stuff. What did they do with all this stuff? We know beyond a shadow of a doubt if they built a, a, a hydrogen collider that's three miles underground. It says that they have DUMBs, deep underground military bases, all of this so-called money that was being pumped into NASA, billions of dollars, billions. Yeah, we're sending rockets and we're orbiting. We got some satellites doing a couple little things, but guess what? The United States owns all of them. Do you know all control of the satellites that is in our atmosphere that's above us is controlled by the United States of America and them only? Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. It's all, well, let me tell you what I'm trying to say. There's black ops and black projects and all kind of things that's been happening that we don't know about. Amen. Anybody in the military will say they're silenced, they're gagged order, they can't say it on the grounds of, you know, jail and death and all these kind of things. Well, a lot of that money, things that we don't know about, and taxpayers' dollars and all this stuff has been, they have been doing something underground. And we know that in Jeremiah, the Bible says that he's going to shake them. He's going to turn them upside down, and he's going to make them come out. That's what he says. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And the Bible says that the earth is going to open up, and some things are going to come out the earth. So they've been doing some stuff down there. All of these years, they've been doing stuff down there, and they making us believe that we're on, on a mission to find other life in a far-off galaxy, and we're not the only ones. Oh, guess what? Yes, we are. God created us. Yeah, there's angels and all this kind of stuff, but you and I are special. Amen. We as creation. And he's put a hedge of protection around us. And the enemy has come in and lied about a lot of things to you and me. And I believe the whole deal with the NASA stuff was to conceal the time. And what you and I, and I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. One thing I know I'm not wrong about is that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Christ. He died for you and me. And the only way we can get to heaven is believe in what and believe that He's the door. He's the ladder from heaven. He is the CERN. He is the gateway. He is the only one. That's where my that's where I'm grounded, rooted, firm planted. I don't care if the earth falls down around me, what I see, what happens, where you put me, where you place me, what comes out of the ground, my rock is Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Period. Amen. Yep. But are we going to be so close-minded? If I'm telling you something that is that is contrary to the Word of God, that Jesus ain't the Messiah, this other guy is the Messiah, and he maybe he really didn't die on the cross. Well, then you need to worry and you need to run. 
Because Paul says, if any man preach any other gospel other than the gospel that I preach unto you, if any angel tells you anything different, if any man, any so-called apostle, any prophet preach any other doctrine than Jesus Christ and him crucified, let me, if it's me, Lord, be accursed. Amen. But I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. Like Balak said, I can't, I can't curse when God is blessed. And I'm blessed through Jesus Christ because he lives in me. And we need to be opened up to the things that are coming because if we're so close-minded, we're going to think that these lies that are being done out there is really him coming. And it ain't. Amen. I have an eyes to see and ears to hear. This pastor will never lead you astray. I'll point you to Jesus Christ and him every single time. Every single time. And the Bible says that when the Lord returns, that it says, we know he's seated in the north. In the center of the earth, I believe, is the navel. That's what I believe. And that's why when Jesus ascended, Jerusalem is the navel. It's the center. And when Jesus ascended up into heaven, they all watched him. And they said, why men do you stand here gazing up into the heavens? In the same like manner that you've seen him ascend, he's going to descend. And the Bible says that every eye will see him. Amen. Well, if we're on a globe. Yep. But if this is a flat earth, then he can split it from one side to the other. And we will see him. Yes. Every eye. Yes. Now, I don't know about this guy that's, you know, on the bottom of the earth down here and he's hanging upside down. <laughs> you know, and, and the Lord's coming down here. I don't know where he's, he's in a wrong hole. It's one of those round screen TVs. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a 3D picture that everybody's going to get to watch him on TV. That's it. The Bible says every eye will see him. We have the technology for the false Messiah to come down and we all get to see him. Didn't God say every eye will see him? Well, he was going to use technology. Wrong. Let me tell you this one thing. Let me tell you how you know if it's him or not. It's really simple. Real simple. The Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So, if you see something coming down, and they're showing it to you on TV, and you still plant it on the ground, it ain't him. It ain't him. Well, I didn't go nowhere. Well, you got to go get on a spaceship and they're going to take you on a ride. Oh, okay. Well, why am I still in this flesh? Because I ain't lost this flesh. Because what's eat into this, this eternal body cannot inherit what? That's right. This terrestrial must put on celestial, right? We're going to split. That's right. Is that going to hurt? I don't even care. I don't even care. I'm out of here. Is that really going to hurt? So, I, I'm going to finish and I'm going to stop it and you're gonna, I'm going to give it to you. So... That's, you want to know where your pastor is? That's where I'm at right now. Um, it says, uh, Isaiah 40, 22, 2 Kings 20, 8 through 11. Um, Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10, 12 through 14. The sun stood still. Isaiah, Isaiah 38, 8 uh, says the same thing as in 2 Kings. Lord, are you trying to tell me something? Um, I keep thinking about... Um, oh, wait, hold on a second. Um, the word ferment is actually... Um, it's ra, uh, ra, ra, rakia, ra, rakia, which is the Hebrew strong 7549. It means, listen to this, it means an expanse, a span, you know, he spanned it with his hands. It means expand, expanse, it means flat. Hebrews, the Hebrew Strong's Concordance, 7549, it means flat 
as a base. Flat as a base. Um, it says that uh, it says that God um, uh, in Isaiah it talks about he uh, the earth being a circle. It means um, a circuit which goes you know around. It means a compass. Oh, that's another good thing. How did the how did the rose compass did the ship sail from one side to the other? The rose compass. They knew the earth was flat. They followed the North Star. They went where they needed to go. The Rose Conference. That's what they used. It was flat. Um, Pythagorean or whoever that guy was, and he's in there and he's spinning a ball on the History Channel, and he's got all of these models. I'm sorry. Uh, just, I'm sorry, uh, Lucifer. I ain't convinced anymore. You deceived me for a long time. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's right. They call it. That's right. They're, that's right. They're the Flat Earth Society. You bet. But you, you know what? It was truth trying to come out, but now it's being. It's come out. Let's see. Um, um, let me see if I want to tell you anything else. Um, really, you really get a, a really good idea of the. Uh, and, and let me just kind of show you how it works. Um, if, this is, uh, if this is the circle, you know, that God's creation, he, it's the Fibonacci circle. You know how it starts here and it, it you know, it starts here and then and it goes around. One plus one is two, two plus two, or uh, two plus three is five. And it goes, this is the building block. That's what it is, okay? So if this is a round earth, you know, um, the, uh, the way the sun and the moon, the sun's here and the moon's here, the moon actually moves a little faster than the sun. That's how we get the, um, you know, the, uh, the total eclipse. And just to let you know, the sun is 38,000 miles above our head along with the moon. Um, it's uh, just a little bit difference, about 38,000 miles. You could take a spectrometer or whatever it is that we have today, and you can, um, when the sun comes up, you can measure the sun, and you can actually measure the moon and see they're almost like, identical in, in size. And it'll actually tell you how high it is, 38,000 miles above our head, where they say that it's um, the moon and the sun is 400 million miles apart. That, yeah, this is, I'm telling you, this is not real stuff. This is how much, the lie that we've been, that I believe now, what I'm seeing, according to the Bible and what God's Word says. Um, so what happens is, to, where we have our seasons, you know, our winter and our, our, our winter, our seasons, that on this circle, when the sun orbits around, remember the Bible says that the heavens are like a clock. Well, the clock is flat, and it says the hands rotate around the clock. Ah, the big hand, the little hand. That's the sun and the moon, if you didn't know. That's the hidden stuff. And you know what's really crazy about this? How God led me into all of this? I read a book about watchmakers. Corey Ten Boone and her father was watchmakers. So it's how God lines everything up. Um, and what happens is when the sun is out from the earth the farthest, because it, it rotates around like this, and then slowly it starts coming in, this is how we have our season change, and it comes in so far, and then, and then after it gets in so far, then it starts moving out again, and it rotates around us every day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and then it makes, goes out into a big circle, then we have our winter, then it starts coming in, uh, and then our uh, springtime, and then our summer comes in. And, and then it goes back and it starts rotating and, it, and that's what happens and then every now and then how the, our full moon that's how in our seasons how it pulls the waters and everything um, it, it, the moon catches up with the sun and that's why you'll have your full moon hey and let me tell you another one which led me into it the Bible says that God made the greater light to rule the day but hold on a second now NASA says the moon has no light of itself and we can't see on a back side the moon because it's dark and they don't want you to see there, right? But NASA says the moon doesn't have any light of itself, that it's a reflection of the sun. Wrong. Bible says that God made the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light, light to rule the night. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. 
That's exactly right. The lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars as lights for the heavens as well. He said the moon is a light. I, I mean, if you're gonna argue, I mean, if you want to believe NASA, that's totally up to you. But God's word, when you start looking at it and putting it in order, it's like, oh my God. But we've been trained and taught. We've seen, you know, in the 60s, we watched the rocket go up. Then a little while later, we see him orbiting, you know, supposedly the moon. They're going to get to the moon in three days, you know, and they give you this picture of through this, this glass which shows the circumference or the, the curve of the earth. And from where they was at, they made it through the Van Allen belt, which they don't even understand because the rocketry we have right now, NASA says, cannot penetrate the Van Allen belt. Yes. So what's going on? So the, the laws of physics just cease to exist when Apollo 11, when Lucifer, that is Apollo, Apollyon, Lucifer 11, 11 is, let me just tell you what that is, that is uh, disorder, transgression, chaos. That's exactly right. And man finds out, guess what, that we're in a box. We're in a dome, just like God has said. And if that's the case, well then, you mean to tell me that we can't get out the box? Somebody has us in a box? Why won't you let me go to the Antarctica? Well, what don't, why would you don't want me to see there? If it's all the way around. You could sail all the way around the world, all the way around the, the, the edge like that. You can come all, you can sail all the way around. And guess what? It's all ice holding back the seas. And there's a dome that goes over it. I don't understand it all. But why they won't let us go there? Why can't I catch a flight to go all the way around the world? That means go underneath this big orb. Why can't I fly from here and go to Japan and from Japan to India? Wouldn't that be a much shorter route? Why would you fly me all the way back to the United States and then from the United States send me to another little tip-off place and then from that place send me to that place? Well, it's really easy because it's flat. North, south, east, and west, the four corners. And it says, and the angels hold back the four winds, yes.